Looking for magic cards? At flipsidegaming.com you can now use the promo code LVD to get a 10% discount on orders over $10 while supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another Magic Arena gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at a Gruul aggro deck featuring some of the new planeswalkers from War of the Spark. At 3 mana we've got 3 copies of Domri, Anarch of Bolas. Starts out at 3 loyalty and has a static ability giving our creatures plus 1 plus 0, oh, so a nice little anthem effect. Then the plus 1 helps us ramp, adding red or green mana, making creature spells uncounterable. And then the minus 2 gives us a fine ability giving us a bit of removal as well. Then the other big addition in the deck is Sarkhan, the Masterless, 5 mana for a 5 loyalty planeswalker. And the Static ability says whenever a creature attacks us or a planeswalker we control, each dragon we control deals 1 damage to that creature. And then of course a minus 3 makes a 4-4 red dragon creature token with flying, so that's usually the ability we'll use right away when we play Sarkhan. And the plus 1 says until end of turn, each planeswalker we control becomes a 4-4 red dragon creature and gains flying. So if we have some of our cheaper planeswalkers in play, like the different Domri's, those will turn into 4-4 dragons as well, and the damage will quickly add up, and the static ability from Domri will still apply, so those will be 5 power dragons. Then taking a look at the rest of the deck, at 1 mana we've got the full playset of Lanar Elves, which is a great 1 mana play, allowing for those very explosive starts. Turn 1 Lanar Elves into turn 2, one of our powerful 3 drops, is great, especially if we can go turn 2 Domri, turn 3 Sarkhan, that's of course a dream but uh, Lanar Elves just adds a ton of explosiveness to the deck. We also have the full play set of Pelt Collector as another great 1 mana play, as a 1-1 creature that will grow over time as we play more creatures and put more plus 1 plus 1 counters on it, eventually gaining Trample if it has 3 or more plus 1 plus 1 counters, and we've got plenty of 4 powered creatures to get the Pelt Collector up to a 4-4, considering we have the full play set of Spellbreaker which can come into play as a 4-4, the full play set of Rekindling Phoenix, and the tokens that Sarkhan generates will also help us grow the Pelt Collector, and then we also have the full play set of Shock at 1 mana giving us some cheap interaction to take down opposing creatures and maybe finish off planeswalkers that are at lower loyalty. Then at 2 mana we've got the full play set of Growth Chamber Guardian which is kind of a staple in these Gruul aggro decks as a nice 2 mana 2-2 two -two with adapt 2 getting 2 plus 1 plus 1 counters if we pay 3 mana and then whenever 1 or more plus 1 counters are placed on the Growth Chamber Guardian we can search our library for an additional copy so we can kind of string together multiple Growth Chamber Guardians and provide a steady stream of 4-4 four -four creatures. And then we also have two copies of Zurtan Goblin as another 2-drop, which can come into play as a 2-2 with haste if we need to pressure opposing planeswalkers, or as a 3-3 if we want a sturdier body to maybe grow a pelt collector, or to help us fight with Domri and not lose our creature. Another option at 2 mana that we can consider is something like Thorn Lieutenant, which is pretty decent against the mono red decks, since we'll usually get a 1-1 token even if they try and kill it. But the flexibility of gaining haste is pretty key in a metagame full of planeswalkers. And speaking of haste, at 3 mana we've got the full playset of Gruul Spellbreaker, which is another riot creature that can come into play as a 3-3 with haste and trample, or as a 4-4 with trample. And as long as it's our turn, we and Gruul Spellbreaker have hexproof, which is a pretty funny interaction if we're facing the 4 mana Chandra from War of the Spark and attack her, since then Chandra will be forced to deal damage to herself, since she's the only legal target. And then we also have the full playset of Legion Warboss, and curving turn 1 Lanarals into turn 2 Legion Warboss is kind of reminiscent of curving into a turn 2 Goblin Rebel Master, which is a great feeling, and provides another hasty creature to attack Planeswalkers with, and Legion Warboss also combines great alongside Domri, giving all our creatures plus 1 plus 0, so the tokens can attack into 2 toughness creatures and trade instead of just attacking into their death. And then at 4 mana we've got another Planeswalker, Domri Chaosbringer, which brings a bit of card advantage with the minus 3 ability, the plus 1 also lets us ramp, adding red or green and giving the creature riot if we use that mana, so it comes into play with an additional plus one plus one counter or haste, and the ultimate can also be game winning, but just any additional planeswalker we can muster when we have a Sark on the Masterless in our deck will make the plus one all the more powerful. And then finally we also have the full playset of Rekindling Phoenix as another great evasive threat, that's also a recursive threat as the opponent will have to kill it twice or exile it to get rid of it, and another four powered creature to help us grow a Pelt Collector as well. A different four drop we could consider in the deck is Chandra as another planeswalker to provide a bit of card advantage that plays well with Sarkhan, but I think Domri is a little bit more synergistic in our deck, and there's only so many 4 drops we can play. Then taking a look at our mana base, we've got 8 mountains and 7 forests. We could potentially go with 7 mountains, 8 forests, kind of have to balance how often we want to be able to consistently cast Lanarals and Pelt Collector on turn 1, versus needing double rat for Rekindling Phoenix and Sarkhan, so we went with 8 mountains, 7 forests, and then we also have the full playset of Rootbound Crank and the full playset of Stomping Ground, with a total of 23 lands, considering we also have Lanarals and the different Domries to provide more mana. So that's the deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the draw with a solid opening hand. 
Turn 1 we can play Lanarolfs, turn 2 Domri, make mana, play either Pelt Collector or Shock. Although facing turn 1 Mountain, the Lanarolfs might not survive. So far so good. And it's gonna be a turn 2 Electrostatic Field. Alright, I think we're still gonna make the play we mentioned. And hope our opponent doesn't have a Goblin Chain Whirler. If they're playing Electrostatic Field, there's a small chance that they're playing just more instant and sorceries and fewer creatures. In which case we might dodge the Goblin here. It's gonna be a Runaway Steamkin, which we can easily take out with Shock. Or we could just play one of our creatures and then fight with Domri, that also works. We can play Pelt Collector, play Gruul Spellbreaker, and then also Shock the Steamkin. That seems pretty good. So let's make a green. I've lived with animals my entire life. Play Pelt Collector. And then we're gonna have to tap the Lanarals to play Spellbreaker. And put it in play with the plus one counter. And then I'll attack. Could also shock the electrostatic field if they block. But I think we want to shock the Steamkin. And I'll do it now. Alright, so not a bad turn 3. And we have Domri Chaos Bringer to refuel. And now a potential Chain Whirler would not be as bad. Tormenting Voice discards second electrostatic field. So this is a moderate version that might be playing Arclight Phoenix. And tries to leverage cards like Steamkin to generate extra mana. Maybe Gutter Snipes as well. So let's start by playing Domri. And then we're probably going to fight the Electrostatic Field here. But our opponent has seen enough, just a bit too far behind, taking 11 damage and probably being dead next turn. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw with a decent hand. Any hand with a turn on Lander Elves is going to be quite powerful if it works out. And there's a turn 2 war boss potentially. Opponent on turn 1 Breeding Pool. And Temple Garden, so this could be the banned mid-range deck with Vivian and Toketra. So playing war boss is not as good now because our opponent gets to block with Growth Chamber Guardian, so we lose the 1-1 token. So we could consider a different play. Could go Pelt Collector into our own Growth Chamber Guardian. Seems okay. And then maybe save the Zurta Goblin as a 3-3 to grow the Pelt Collector even more. The band mid-range matchup is probably going to come down to whether or not we can find some of our flyers in time. Rekindling Phoenix and Sarkon are going to be the most important cards for us. Since the opponent's probably going to be able to go bigger on the ground with cards like Oketra generating 4-4 tokens. Opponent is going to main phase Adapt the Guardian to play around any burn spells. Gets a 4-4. And it's going to stay on defense, which makes sense. We get to attack with our own Growth Chamber Guardian and Adapt. And if our opponent trades, then we also grow the Pelt Collector. Alternatively, we can play the War Boss, but we don't really get any amazing attacks. So I think I'm down attacking with the Guardian. Opponent does go for the trade, we'll adapt. Deputy of Detention, Exiling Pelt Collector, fair enough. So we can just play another Guardian and Adapt right away. Can go Guardian plus War Boss. We would like to keep chaining together Guardians, but the opponent's removal is probably just more copies of Deputy of Detention, which could exile any number of Growth Chamber Guardians anyway. So I think I like Guardian plus War Boss this turn. So we'll start with the War Boss, since there's a small chance our opponent respects a shock and therefore doesn't block the token. But our opponent doesn't fall for it. And we'll play Guardian. I 
Alright, opponent had a second Guardian in hand. And Domri, that's a great pickup, since now we get to take out the Deputy, as well as our token being able to attack past the 2-2 Guardians, so great draw. Let's run out Domri. And then the war boss would not be attacking anyway here, so we'll just fight with that one. And then we still get to play out a Zerta Goblin. I will make it into a four-powered creature here, so that it can attack into future Growth Chamber Guardians. But now the token and the Lanerals are fine to attack. We've got plenty of blockers to save our Domery as well. Opponent says go. Four mana up, but no double blue, so no Frilled Mystics. Their opponent's just gonna probably adapt one of their Guardians. We get to do the same, so we can adapt. Search up another Guardian. And we could play the main phase with Domri's ability. I guess it doesn't matter too much. So let's just move to combat. And then I think we're fine attacking with everyone except Warboss here. And if they want to eat the Pelt Collector, that's fine. Opponent just trades. Falls to four. And we get to add another Growth Chamber Guardian to the board. Alright. Let's see how our opponent recovers. If they don't. Sweet. So Domri to the rescue. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with turn 1 Lunar Elves. Sadly, don't have the 3 mana Domri to let us cast a turn 3 Sarkon, but uh, still a keep. Turn 1 Planes. Into Sky Marcher, so up against a White Weenie. And well, there's 3 mana Domri, so that's kind of the perfect draw here. Don't have a one drop to go with it, but still allowing for turn three Sarkon against the White Weenie deck is no mean feat. Scythe Taker is fine. And then the static ability on Sarkon is gonna help protect our Planeswalkers as well. So let's make some red mana. And then next turn we can start attacking with a bunch of our flying planeswalkers as well. Hopefully no Conclave Tribunal, since that could exile the dragon and kill Sarkon. Alright, another Tithe Taker. And they do have the Tribunal, sadly. Exiling Sarkon instead of our dragon. Fair enough. Rekindling Phoenix, pretty good too. So we're probably just going to play Lanarals plus Phoenix here, develop our board in terms of playing more creatures. And then next turn we can play Domri to refuel. Seems okay. So let's plus for mana. And I think we're fine attacking with the Lanarals as well. And then next turn we can play our second Domri, and maybe minus opponent giving us a GG. Alright, well, looks like our explosive start was too much for them to handle. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw with a pretty good hand. Do have two Domri's, which may not be amazing, but having the turn one Lander Elves into turn two Domri is still pretty strong. Paradise Roots. So, oh wow, Legion Warboss, that's quite a draw. We could have gone Domri, make green mana, play Lanor Elves, but I think I just prefer playing turn 2 Warboss since it can attack into the Paradise Druid. 
And then uh, next turn, Domri in combination with the Warboss in play is going to be quite strong as well. So your opponent's got access to 4 mana total, says go. So this could be a Frilled Mystic, in which case we probably don't want to just main phase our Domri. So I think I'm just going to move to combat. And then we could offer up the Legion Warboss for the Paradise Druid, that way our opponent would be unable to play Frilled Mystic, but then we would also lose a Warboss. So I'm not sure how I feel about trading Warboss for Druid here. It might be okay. Yeah, I guess we'll go for it. And then Mentor on to a token. Alright, opponent's gonna Frilled Mystic as a blocker and then we can just shock it, so... Gotta go into full control to make sure we get the chance to kill it before our opponent declares it as a blocker. Submit. And then we still get to play another elf. We could have also decided to keep back Lanner Elves and then we would have still been able to play a Domri. But then our opponent maybe doesn't flash in a Mystic to try and ambush the Lanner Elves or the War Boss, who knows. Opponent with a Hydroid Crisis gains one life. So are they dead here? We can fight our 3-2 with the Crisis to clear a path, attack with everyone, and then I believe our opponent will be at 2, so we get to finish them off with a Shock. And the air opponent scoops it up, sweet, so not a very explosive start, thanks to turn 1 ladder elves. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, and we've got some early shocks to interact with, and then growth chamber guardian and spellbreaker as threats, so seems fine. I think I'm okay playing the stomping ground untapped, just in case we need to shock here, even though playing it untapped gives away that we have a shock in hand. Opponent just with a tapped steam vents. Belt Collector, sadly a turn late. Still gonna run out to Growth Chamber Guardian. So this hand would have been a little bit better on the draw if we were able to play the turn 1 Pelt Collector. Put it on Grixis. And Angrath's Rampage to take out our 2 2. Sarkhan's gonna be a good one. Let's just play Hasty Spellbreaker. Opponent with Discovery. So we're in a bit of an awkward spot where we're holding two shocks which aren't too effective against the opponent. Pretty far away from casting Sarkhan and Pelt Collector doesn't have any big creatures to make it grow. But uh, we'll still attack for three here and then run out both Lanarals and Pelt Collector and then hope they don't have a Ritual of Soot. Which would kill our entire board. It's gonna be a Nickel Bolas instead, that's fine. So we'll discard a Shock. And Land lets us play Sarkon. So do we attack with a Spellbreaker? I don't think so, because I don't want to be forced to Shock. So we'll just play Sarkon, make a Dragon. No sword can pierce my tongue to me. Which grows Belt Collector as well. And then maybe next turn we can make an all-out attack. It's gonna be Angra's Rampage, making a Sacrifice Sarkon. It's not too bad. Alright, so let's move to combats. Attack with everyone. If they want to block Lanor Elves to play around Shock, that's fine by me. But this is the most likely outcome. So damage happens. Pelt Collector grows and we'll Shock to finish off Nicol Bolas. And empty your hands in case your opponent has another Nickel Bolas, and we top deck a Sarkon. Alright. Opponent has their own Sarkon. Your end has arrived. And the Lanner Elves a draw, so now we also have to watch out for Sarkon's static ability, so the Lanner Elves doesn't get to attack here. I think we send Dragon Face 
and then just hope to burn them out. Make a 4-4 Pelt Collector. And our opponent doesn't have a Dragon in play, so the Lanarals are safe to attack. Nicol Bolas probably gonna minus on the Pelt Collector. Ooh, interesting. Can just make a Dragon with a Sarkon instead. Yeah, that's a pretty sweet play. Now the Lanarals don't get to attack. So, we're pretty far behind. I think we still send Pelt Collector at her face. Watch this. And then run out another elf. But our opponent has four cards in hand, two active planeswalkers, and we just have three 1-1s one in play. So it's not looking good. You can imagine if this game we had a turn 1 Pelt Collector, instead of doing nothing, things would look quite a bit different since then our opponent takes quite a beating from that Pelt Collector along the way. Not on Nicol Bolas. Legion War Boss. I don't think that's gonna rescue us. Opponent with another Dragon as well for Sarkon Static. So yeah, the Dragon Synergies in the opponent's deck definitely pretty big here, saving them from all our one toughness creatures. So that should be game over. And it looks like they also have another removal spell in hand for the war boss anyway. But the token force to attack is gonna die to the Sarkon Static ability as well. Alright, GG's, we'll let our opponent close out the game here. Alright, that seems unnecessary, but sure. Alright, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, and seems okay. No proactive early plays on turn 1 or 2, but double war boss can do some damage. Facing Dimir. Just play another mountain for now. Alright, so Asper. Let's see if it's mid range or control. Seeker Squire, that's interesting. I think we'll shock that with uh, Explore Trigger on the stack. So the token from the War Boss gets to attack and survive. And Siren's Ruse, interesting. So this could be some sort of uh, battlement combo deck. Lumbering Battlement plus Flicker Effects and Creatures with Enter the Battlefield abilities. Maybe go infinite with Mirror Image, who knows. Sailor of Means. Definitely looks that way. So we'll just play another War Boss. Tank with everyone. And then hope for a land so we can start playing Phoenix and Sarkon. Otherwise we've got Guardian plus Shock. Not a Sailor. So now they could double block a Legion War Boss. And it looks like they have some instant speed plays available as well. So our opponent does get to double block War Boss and kill it. But then it would also be taking quite a bit of damage from all the tokens. So I think it's worth it to attack with everyone to try and get in more damage. So the triggers happen, so I imagine if our opponent had removal for War Boss, we would have seen it already. So let's send everyone. If they want to double block War Boss, they're taking 9 damage. So they might not be able to afford to. Alright. Play Phoenix. Resolves. 
So now our opponent needs to deal with all these tokens and the Phoenix. Still have a shock in hand, so maybe burn them out. Are we gonna see the Lumbering Battlements? Basilica Bellhaunt instead, alright, that's pretty good. And what do we discard? I'm thinking the Guardian. Since we might be able to burn them out with the shock. They could have a Siren's Ruse here to flicker the Bellhaunt, instead it's gonna be a Dusk Legion Zealots. So our opponent's got four blockers. Well, now with double shock they're definitely dead. But I think they would have been dead to single shock as well. If we attack with everyone, Mentor. Opponent's got four blockers. Yeah, they would have been dead on board regardless. Don't even need the shock. And our opponent scoops it up. Alright, sweet. Legion War Boss, quite the card. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw. Hand seems okay. We don't get to play turn one Pelt Collector, sadly, unless we draw into an untapped green source. But we do have a shock to interact with. Turn two Guardian, turn three War Boss, maybe. Facing untapped Steam Vents. And go. Alright, we'll just play a tapped Root Baron Crag in case we draw Forest. We might want to go a double Pelt Collector. Since your opponent might have a shock, could also just be an opt end of turn. And if we suspect they have a shock, then going double pelt collector is a bit better than going growth chamber guardian. It's gonna be an Augur Bolas, their opponent's on the Arclight Phoenix deck. Bolas misses at least. So we'll just play growth chamber guardian for now. Discovery. So we can expect to see cards like Goblin Electromancer to make all their spells cheaper and then Arclight Phoenix coming back from the graveyard, arising from the ashes. So here I kind of like attacking with a Growth Chamber Guardian, using Shock to take out Augur, and then playing double Pelt Collector instead of playing a Legion War Boss that isn't gonna get much done anyway. And the next turn the war boss is gonna grow both belt collectors as well. So let's shock the auger. We kind of want to keep shock for a goblin electromancer, but we have a second copy in hand. So I think this is fine. We could have also played our third land on tap to attack with the guardian, and then our opponent maybe doesn't block with auger because they fear a uh, Adapt activation on the Growth Chamber Guardian, but we actively wanted them to block with Augur, so we could take it out. Alright, God Eternal Kefnet. It's a pretty good one. It's gonna block our creatures quite well. So we gotta try and go wide with tokens. So that one has to attack. Don't think we throw away any other creatures for now. There's the Electromancer. Shard a course for one mana. So the card we don't want to see here is Finale of Promise, getting back both an instant and a sorcery from the graveyard. Although they don't have any burn spells yet, but they might have some in hand, shocks, lightning strikes, lava coils. Two killer creatures here. Lava coil lines up pretty well against our rekindling phoenix, so if we can somehow bait out the use of Lava Coil before playing the Phoenix, that would be nice. But it's gonna be somewhat difficult. Alright, another War Boss. We'll just be on the War Boss plan for now. Could be worth it to send in everyone now. Opponent gets to eat War Boss with Kefnet. Kill a goblin token with the Electromancer, take seven. Yeah, I think it's worth it. Gotta try and get the damage in while we can. Do have a shock in hand for some reach as well. Sahili is gonna provide a few chum blockers. 
If we can get path collectors up to 4-4, they can trample over the servo tokens. So that's one approach. So, do we see any Arclight Phoenix in the graveyard? We don't. And yeah, if the blue-red Phoenix deck doesn't find Arclight Phoenix in the top 20 cards of their deck, the deck can be a little bit underpowered. There's a Lava Coil, so that opens up the door for Rekindling Phoenix. Kefnut feels comfortable attacking. So now we get to play Phoenix. Grow up health collectors. And I think we go face with everyone here. Make some trades, get in some damage. Opponent trades off Electromancer. Down to six, but the belt collectors are still in play. We've got a Rekindling Phoenix, which hopefully sticks around. And next turn we've got a pretty efficient turn with Warboss plus Shock. If they block Phoenix with Kefnet, we can also take it out. So we gotta hope that those two remaining cards aren't finales. Or more Lava Coils. Alright, Beacon Bolt. Dealing 10 damage, that's pretty powerful Beacon Bolt. Point says go. So they're at 6. Yeah, I mean, we're still gonna go for it here. Warboss. Attack with everyone and our opponents. And then if they do block the Phoenix, we can maybe take out Kefnets. If they don't block the Phoenix, they're dead to shock. And if they take four from the goblins, they're also dead to shock. Alright, so now we have them taking two. Yeah. I think it's worth it to take out Kefnet. They get to jumpstart Beacon Bolt at the very least to take out the Phoenix, but their entire board will be gone. Pelt Collector also grows. And do we need to keep Mountain in hand for some reason? Don't think so, we'll just play it out. Beacon Bolt the Phoenix token, and then explode. So yeah, we got lucky that our opponent didn't find any copies of Arclight Phoenix in the top half of their deck, otherwise we could have been in a bit of trouble there. Alright, we're on the play with turn 1 Lanarals, turn 2 Warboss or Domri, so we'll keep. And if they take out the Lanarals with a shock, we still have a turn 2 Zurta Goblin. It's gonna be a tapped Warrior Grave, so we get to live the dream here. And I think in this case I'll play the war boss first. And then next turn we have both the option of rekindling Phoenix or Domri to pump the team. Thought Erasure can take away either one. Grixis is probably going to struggle to deal with Phoenix unless they've got a Vraska's Contempt in hand. And yeah, they have to take away the Phoenix here, but now Domri is going to represent quite a bit of damage. So the card we're the most terrified of here is a potential Crime the Carnarium wiping the board, so we probably don't want to play Goblin as a 2-2. And instead we can play Domri. Plus for mana. And then just play a 3-3 Goblin which can survive Crime the Carnarium here. Opponents already down to 9, and it's only their third turn here. No double black, and our opponent explodes. So yeah, our deck can definitely be pretty brutal on the play with the Lanor Elves. Not much the opponent can do there. Alright, that's gonna do it for today's gameplay. Let me know if you would like to see some popper content on the channel. But for now, I wanna thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed. And as always, have a nice day.
I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.